Retreat Series, Dhamma Talk, number 32. We are practicing mindfulness and sight meditation based on the <coughs> method of what we know as Mahasi method <coughs> in the West. But actually, it is according to the Satipatthana Sutra Long Discourses full foundation of mindfulness technique <coughs> and we call it Mahasi because the focus or emphasizes on the movement of the abdomen at the beginning so we have been practicing for some time and when a yogi become skillful, let's call it, a skillful yogi. What does it mean by a skillful yogi? A skillful yogi has the ability to observe or to note, okay, to observe or to note every actions and movements and behavior. Any yogi who has the ability to note or to observe or to watch every actions, movements and behavior and that person or that yogi is called a skillful yogi. And in here one need to understand the word actions actions there are three kinds of actions physical actions okay, verbal actions and mental actions so one need to understand that word action under such condition both physical verbal and mental and all the movements and behavior and if you can observe them okay, every activities of these things, then that yogi is called skillful yogi in this meditation. <clears throat> we just call it skillful yogi. Now we know what that person can do. And along with that, we need to understand the word sambhajanya. That sambhajanya is quite often used <coughs> and we need to know it with precision. Okay? People use it quite loosely. So in here we are going to discuss to understand what this word sambhajanya means. So in general sambhajanya means understanding or comprehending okay it's understanding or comprehending every actions every actions behaviors and movement clearly thoroughly completely okay if there's a full understanding or comprehension on every actions physical mental and verbal behaviors and movement thoroughly, completely, and clearly. That is called sampajanya, just general statement. <coughs> so we just say one word sampajanya, but when the Buddha, Buddha taught us, okay, it is in a sentence. That sentence is to complete is called atapi. Sampajanya Satima Atapi Sampajanya Satima That's a full sentence <coughs> But in general we just use the word loosely Sampajanya, just one word In English translation directly used in the book is Clear Comprehension Sampajanya, Clear Comprehension So in here, 
full sentence is atapi sampajanya setima what is atapi means atapi means it is the fiery effort urgent effort <coughs> okay. that has the ability to burn up all the mental defilements okay atapi means Actually, it simply say it is effort, worriya, but not just ordinary worriya, ordinary effort. It is the fiery effort, ardent effort, in which it has the power. You apply the effort so much; it has the power to burn up, to dry up all the mental defilements. Okay which is loba, dosa, and moha, greed, anger, and delusion, mental defilements. Is that what adapi means? <coughs> and the next word is sambhajanya. So what is sambhajanya? <coughs> sambhajanya is knowing, understanding, okay? comprehending, Knowing, understanding, comprehending the objects, the object of observation at the present moment in many ways, in many forms, in many aspects. Okay? You know, you understand, okay? you comprehend the object, whatever object that may be that you are observing at the present moment in many ways, in many forms, in many aspects. And if you understand that way okay, correctly, see, then that is Sambhajanya. Okay, now it become more and more detailed what Sambhajanya means. And satima, satima is being mindful. Just one word is being mindful. But what is, what are you being mindful? Being mindful about the five aggregates. Five aggregates. Pinchak kanda. What are the five aggregates? If you remember correctly, first of all is rupa form or body okay rupa materiality form or body and then vedana vedana is feelings and then sanya perception and then sankara mental formations or mental factors and vijnana consciousness. Those five are what we call you and me, the five aggregates. And satima means one is being mindful at all time on the five aggregates. So each word has a meaning there. We try to expand it a little bit more and more and more. So in other words, We are being mindful on the five aggregates, Benchakanda. Mindful in what way? Mindful with fiery effort, the effort that brings us to the level of burning up all the mental defilements. And once you have reached that stage, you begin to understand. You begin to comprehend, you begin to know the object that is under the observation at the present moment in details, in many aspects, in various ways. That what is mean by Adapi Sampajanya Satima. So now we begin to expand a little bit more on the word Sampajanya, clear comprehension. 
you always lay clear comprehension right at the beginning beginner class we say sambhajanya clear comprehension in the sutra okay, we talk about this clear comprehension but one need to know the detail aspect of what it means <clears throat> and once you know what it means of course you practice this is basically a process of what you need to do you being mindful on the five grades okay, with the fiery effort so that you would understand the object in many ways in various way in all aspects so that's a little process that one must do one need to do that's what a buddha told us what to do and you keep repeating that process that little three steps again and again and again you repeat that so that is basically one way of the buddha telling us how to practice repeatedly okay repeat that process again and again and when you are repeating that process okay you must do that you must repeat that you must practice that with great chanda in other words great great willingness and zeal you just simply don't do it you must do it with great willingness or zeal that's a burning desire to do it that kind of a thing great willingness and see it's called chanda with that chanda you have to do without that chanda without that kind of great willingness and zeal if not oh, okay i'll do it and i i'll do what i can do it okay i'll keep it on the back burner oh i'm in the mood i'll do it i'm not in the mood i won't do it that means you do not have that chanda okay and here is if you consider this as a priority and you are practicing this process repeatedly based upon the great willingness to do so the chanda become very important that's the base you have to put upon <coughs> so once you have a great willingness to do it you apply mindfulness you apply mindfulness with fiery effort with the objective of knowing the object in various way in various aspects and in details that's it simple but one need to understand very clearly about it so this is the meaning of the words let's use the example example is what we are practicing of course we always use the word and the <clears throat> as an example to discuss about rising and falling movement rising movement of the abdomen falling movement of the abdomen we call it the primary object or we call it the default object when there is nothing else we always go to that rising and falling movement of the abdomen or stomach tell me wherever that you can observed distinctly so we are observing how do we observe how do we observe is we must observe it closely okay closely what does it mean by closely closely is we use the example if you remember okay a line of ants a line of ants running from about 10 15 20 feet away you look at that line of ants it's a black line or a black string continuously black like a black rope or a string line and you go closer and closer maybe about 4 feet 5 feet then you begin to see the break in the line it's not a line anymore it's a many little black dots overlapping but still look like a black line but some break 
and then you go really close, about a foot away from that line, and you look at this, the black disappear. In fact, you can see the bricks a lot more, space where there is no ends, a lot more. In other words, the closer you get, the more detail you see. The closer you get, you have become, you become closer and closer to your reality. And even if you look very close, just a singularly onto an end, okay, with a <coughs> magnifying glass, you will see legs and eyes and heads and tails and even the hair on the legs, detail. That's what it means. The closer and the closer you look at the object, the closer you get to the object, the more singularly spotted and focused onto the object, the clearer and the more detail you see as it really represented, not a perception, <clears throat> not what it seems like. That's what it means by observing closely. One must observe closely this rising and falling. Okay? And we use this as a primary object. As we use this as a primary object, okay, first of all, especially for beginners, or especially for people who haven't established much concentration yet, those people don't, don't look for any other object. Don't search for any other object. This is the object, it is right there all the time. Rising movement, falling movement, rising movement. So don't look, don't search for any other object. And also don't expect any other objects because from the theory you know all this and that and those and these, they are there and automatically you have expectation for it, you are looking for it, you are searching for it. One must not do that. So, if you look at this rising and falling movement very closely, singularly, without paying any attention to any other object, if you can do that, then you have established the word satima, being mindful. That's what being mindful means, satima. Yeah, you are singularly on the object, observing very closely with the exclusion of anything around, not even in your mental state of expectation or looking or searching. If you can observe that way, if you can note that way, then it is called being mindful, satipa. In this meditation, it's all about knowing how to do exactly and precisely. If you can do that, you will find your progress go leaps and bounds in a very short period of time. That's why we are repeating this in many different ways again and again. <clears throat> so, you are observing now singularly onto the objects. And even though we say singularly, of course, at the beginning we know, we already know, we have a few objects selectively given to you. Okay, there's a rising movement, there's a falling movement. Or maybe rising, sitting, falling. Or rising, sitting, falling, touching. Okay, it may be three, it may be four, or even five. Rising, sitting, falling, touching, touching. About five. That's it. You may use two, you may use three, four, or five, depending on ability to observe with smoothness and in harmony. And also in walking meditation, lifting, pushing, dropping, or you know exactly we can go up to about six parts and so on. But still, 
it is within the countable number. And whatever that countable number that you are observing, you must be able to singularly observe each and every one of them very closely at moment to moment to moment. So we're starting to expand to three objects, four objects, five objects, but still a few. So these are few objects you really observe. And if you close your eyes and do it, if you do it, you will find that at that moment, when you are singularly spot on to the object, moment to moment, at that moment, you are totally being mindful and you are. Because of the being mindful, you are concentrated. And you can do it one time, observe two times, three times, four times. And after about two, three, four times, what happened was you slip away because it is not that easy to be able to observe with that kind of intensity onto the object more than about three, four, maybe five. And after that, your intensity of observation drop. Intensity of observation drop. As soon as it drops, what happened? Other objects come in. Thoughts come in. Okay. All sort of uh, anger, hatred, jealousy, happiness, joy, all the emotions arises, all sort of thoughts forms arises. These kind of things come in. Why do they come in? Because it's the nature of the mind nature of the untrained mind. The nature of the untrained mind is this untrained mind like objects. Number one, the mind or consciousness does not exist without an object, period. They like objects, but untrained mind, they like the objects that is associated with or pair with mental defilements any objects with a little bit of honey you like better, any object with a little bit of uh, bitterness you don't like it, some objects you couldn't figure out, and those are the mental defilements. Whenever those kind of little extra comes in, the mind loves it because the mind can really play its role and try to expand and dissect embrace or push. Untrained mind loves the objects, to look at the objects in association with mental defilements or pair with mental defilements. That's what the untrained mind does. And the mind is very quick and very fast. So what's happening is, you can observe with this kind of great intensity onto the object about two or three or four times. And then <clears throat> intensity drop. As soon as intensity drop, mental defilement comes in, it slips away, and the mind finds something that it loves, something that pair or associated with mental defilements. <clears throat> That's how the mind slips away into thoughts and emotions. That is the nature of it. So must know. Okay, so for that reason, at that moment, after about two or three notings, your energy automatically, your effort automatically drop. And once you know that is the order that is happening, that is where this fiery effort come in. Fiery effort. Because the objects you pair with the mental defilements, like likable object, unlikable object, that is the kilesa. You must burn off that kilesa that is in association with the object. So what happened was, you put this fiery and ardent effort. And 
When you put that, it burns off the kilesa and you see the object as it is, without any mental defilements. That's why we need this very urgent effort. <clears throat> so, if you can observe that way, the object, first three full time, and then with a great effort, if you're observing it, the mental defilements will burn away. And once it burns away, the object that you're observing, whatever it is, it will unfold the true nature by itself. You don't need to unfold, you don't need to figure out. It unfolds by itself. Okay. The true nature of the object that you are observing starting to unfold by itself. In other words, this rising and falling movement will unfold its true nature. We thought we already know it is moving, but it is not yet, because there are so many ways. If you get sampajanya, what does it mean? In many aspects, in many ways, various ways. Okay, all the details that are associated with this rising and falling movement will unfold by itself. So we just observe that, okay, rising, falling, rising, falling, even say don't pay attention to any other thing. So because of that, because of that instruction, some people, some people who came and practice, some people who are very skillful with other techniques, they come and practice, and they make an observation and they make a statement. This method is not full foundation of mindfulness. It is only rupa nupasana, mindful of the mindfulness of the body. They make a snap observation and step statement. In fact, it came up quite often. Yeah, by definition, it is because the, all that you're observing is rising and falling and rising and falling. Yeah, that is physicality. So this is a rupa nupasana. With their limited mind, with the unopened mind, with no experience, okay, based on the intellectual analysis, they dub the method as mindfulness of the body. But let's see how it is. Yes, we are observing this rising movement and falling movement. That movement is what? Rupa materiality. And even let's say go farther. If you get, can feel hot and cold, hot and soft, stiff, there's still Rupa. But if you can observe that continuously repeatedly with a state of being mindful for a extended period of time, not too much, only about five minutes or six minutes if you can maintain it, you will experience something. What it is is suddenly that rising movement and falling movement seems like, okay, you will experience like that is simply rising and falling, rising and falling, just like the clock ticking, tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. You see it, you know it, and the clock is ticking by itself, nothing to do with you. Just like that, this rising and falling movement is happening on its own, nothing, so to speak, to do with you. It is a physical process going on. And then there's another thing. There's simply knowing about that rising and falling movement. Just like you know there's a clock ticking, tick-tock, tick-tock, and here you are distinct from the tick-tock and you know. Two separate things. 
Of course, it's easy. The clock's on the wall. You're sitting here five feet away, two separate things. But when it is in your own body happening, it's not that easy. But suddenly, you will experience, just like the clock and the your knowing, just this, your abdominal movement is a physical process, totally unconnected, unrelated, and there's a knowing process, totally unconnected, two things happening. You will experience it. All that you need is you need that fiery effort, being mindful for about five minutes or six minutes. If you can contain that, you will experience that period. A rookie will experience it. Advanced yogi will experience it. No if or but. And at that mind, just look at it. That movement is the physicality, rupa nupasana. And then there's another phenomenon, knowing. What is that? That is a mentality, the mind, consciousness, that is the awareness or knowing of the mind. Jeta nupasana, two things already. And while you're observing, sometime rising, falling, and there's some sort of a pain associated with it. maybe a little gas pain or something. And you are fully clearly aware of it. If you're aware of it, that is Vedana Nupasana. And then sometime your observation is strong, but not as strong enough. You have a dislike or unpleasantness towards the pain. That is the jitasika. Okay, dislike. Another nupasana. So even though just this little rising and falling, rising and falling, if you go deeper and deeper and deeper, you will find full foundation of mindfulness is right there. Even though you are observing only one object, rising movement and falling movement, that's a rupa, okay, mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of the mind, mindfulness of the feeling, and mindfulness of the dharma. Kama chanda niwarana, liking it, pyavara niwarana, disliking it. All these things are right there. You don't have to label it. You don't have to try to understand it. But now, before you actually go into the meditation, you must understand clear, with clarity. <coughs> that is how it unfolds by itself. That is why people who dubbed this Mahasi method as a simply a Rupa Nupasana, mindfulness of the body is, they are talking with the limited vision and limited mind. They don't know because they haven't experienced it and they haven't trotted down the path. So in here, that is what it means by details. Details. When you're observing it, what happened? You starting to see details. If you're mindful, let's say, what are the details? Detail is your rising movement. Before it is simply a one rising from beginning to the end, one falling beginning to the end. But if you can maintain it for about five to ten minutes, that little move, one movement is not one movement. It is a composite of a series of many movements. At the beginning, you can count five or six movements, and later you can't count, sometime about 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah. All these movements are just like that. That's the way it's going. That has become more details. That's a movement that go in. Along with that, there's a movement. Sometimes you feel it in a sense of pressure, 
pressure, increase pressure, decrease. A series of pressure, increase and decrease. You can feel stiffness. You can feel bloatedness. You can feel hollowness right in the middle of these little movements, rising movement and falling movements. And as we say, you can sometimes feel the pain, discomfort. And sometimes there is a thoughts just go right in. But very fast at that time, just analyzing that one little thing. There's a rising, 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 and then it stops for a fraction of a so second and then keep on rising. So even the rhythmic risings, you begin to find it's not a rhythmic rising. There's a lot of arrhythmic stops in between. These are the ones that you are finding in details. And when you find the Vedana okay, sensation, that's a different one. Sometime aversion, sometime liking it. All these mental states you will come in. Dhammanupasana. That's what it is by it is unfolding by itself. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to search for it. Don't expect it. All that you do is simply observe rising and falling. <coughs> and all the nature of the full foundation of objects will unfold in that one little simple rising and falling. Because we are at the beginning, we still keep it very narrow range, rising, falling, sitting, touching, lifting, pushing. And those things, all the things, this what we call details, starting to unfold by itself. Of course, at the beginning is, it shows up, it disappears, it shows up, disappears, and then a little bit jaggedy way you will see. And the more and more you do, they become very smooth and rhythmic, rhythmic one after the other. These objects, one come, one go, one come, one go, one come, one go, you will see them all. Like water flowing in a stream. They seem to be one, but you know them. It is not. One after the other, you will see them. That is unfolding the true nature by itself. And if you see that way, that is sambhajanya. You are beginning to understand, to know, to comprehend the object in many various aspects on it, that is associated with it, that is related with it. All these things comes in. That way of knowing, understanding, comprehending is sambhajanya. You see, simple, just rising and falling. Now you can't even count how many objects you experience in that one little rising and falling, a series of them. And they are all related with all full foundation of mindfulness, not just rupa. But you need that being mindful state with a fiery effort sustained for about 15 minutes. You will see them like a flow, all these things like a flow. One come and one go, and one come and one go. <coughs> that is Sambhajanya. Okay, let's just see Sambhajanya in terms of language wise divided. Sam. Okay, Pa Janya. Three. What is Sam? Sam means correctly and thoroughly. Okay? You remember samasati, samasamadi, correct, right. That's it. Sam is a short for sama. Correctly, rightly, and thoroughly. 
not simply correctly, rightly, and thoroughly, by oneself, you are experiencing directly yourself. You are knowing thoroughly yourself with your own effort. Not simply the truth comes to you. You have to work very hard on it. So oneself understanding and knowing thoroughly and correctly. That's what some mean. And then pa. Pa, pa is that one in various ways, various aspects. Okay, even in the materiality, you can see hot and cold, hard and soft, movement, vibration, great intensity of vibration, small intensity of vibration, and so on. In other words, Mahabuddha. Four great essential elements of materiality, you will see them. But like a flow, one after the other, you know them singularly, singularly, one after the other. That is, pa, various way you know. You know the mind, you know the matter, you know all the emotions, you know the jeta mental factors, all the mental defilements arising, kama chanda niwarana, byabara niwarana, all these things. That is how one knows. And not only that, if you can keep maintaining that about 15 to 30 minutes, not once, not twice, quite frequently, quite regularly, if you can maintain that level of satima, being mindful, you will start to see with clarity and sharpness the arising and the passing away of these each and every object singularly they arise and they pass away they arise and they pass away you will see them singularly in other words what is that if you can experience directly arising and passing away the word is called anicca impermanence you are experiencing the impermanence nature of all physicality and mentality. And if you are grounded in it, then you start to feel that this impermanency is oppressing on every object at every moment. That feeling, that understanding, that direct intuitive understanding of that nature is called dukkha, suffering. And you observe and you observe and you find that there's nothing you can do. They simply arise and pass away, arise and pass away, swifter and swifter, faster and faster. Sometimes like in a vortex, sucked up. Everything that arising is sucked up and gone and you are helpless and you can't do anything about it. That kind of experience is anatta, non-self, no soul. That is non-self, no soul. You see that? And that is, okay, pa, in a various way, all these things. You are understanding all these things. And all these various effects, the way you understand the physicality, mentality, and all its characteristic. And if you understand them, if you know them, if you comprehend them with clarity and sharpness, that state is called jhana, sampa. Jana. Sam, pa, jana. Jana is understanding, knowing, comprehending in such a fashion and details. That's the word of sampajanya means.
Now you know whenever somebody say sambhajanya, you know exactly what it is. But one thing is this one is very close. Moment to moment, fleeting moment, in that level, on that scale, you are observing and you are understanding. And to be able to understand that, if you correctly remember past few Dharma talks, how to observe, okay? The whole line is kusalanan damanan bhavanaya. To develop the highest, the greatest, the most supreme form of wholesomeness, okay? We go with Pamada and apamada, heedlessness and heedfulness. So I won't repeat the Pali word again, but English word is very simple. How do we observe to have this sampajanya? Number one, one must give great respect and seriousness to the practice. That's one. Okay. Anadikya. Anadiyasa, sambhajanya. Second one is, you must observe in such a way there is no break in between from one, no gap in between one observation to the other. Number two. Number three, you do it not half-heartedly, but with full throttle. Okay, without full throttle. In other words, you will not take any break during the time of retreats. That is another way of observing. And the fourth one, and the fourth one is, you do with such a great desire. Your desire is so strong, you don't care for your life or life or a limb. Okay. At this moment, when we talk that, that seems, ha, huh, my goodness, do I have to give up my life or my limb? But it is the mindset that you go. When you reach to the higher and higher stage of experience, you really don't give a damn about your limb or a life or a heart attack or fall down and die. It will come to a state. That kind of willingness or chanda chaita arises. You practice in such a way without giving a hoot for your life or a limb. That's number four. Chanda <clears throat> And number five, Asewana. Okay. In short, to live for us, we have to eat food, we have to drink water, we have to breathe air. We depend on food, water, and air. In such a fashion, we must depend on this being mindful. That important. If you starve, if you got thirst, if you can't breathe, you will die only one life. But if you are not mindful, you will be dying endless number of lives to come. You will die and you will die and you will die and you will die. In other words, birth and death, birth and death will come repeatedly. Because you are not being mindful. So in such kind of uh, importance, one must depend on this being mindful. And number six, bahuli kama, a bahuli kama. If you remember, you must repeat this process again and again and again and again. Don't get bored, don't get tired, because it is like life and death. And the seventh factor, if you remember, you must have a resolute mind. This is it. This is what I do. I will not give up. I will not surrender. So we talk about those things for seven different, under seven different Dharma talks, these seven factors. If you apply those things, you will have 
you will experience, you will possess sampajanya. You will understand the nature of the mind and matter thoroughly, completely, clearly, and sharply. So may all of you be able to practice mindfulness meditation, mindfulness insight meditation, with the fiery effort, and may you become the possessor of clear comprehension as soon as possible. Sadhu, 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 buddham Damam Bhujemi Sangam Bhujemi